Hello, this is Mr. Frazier, and I'm going to go through a sample of Project 1, except I'm going to change some of the numbers because I'm not going to do the assignment for you, but I will go through a sample problem and explain to you how you can type up your answers and show your arithmetic so that <clears throat> moving forward you don't have a problem with showing such. So the first thing I'm going to do is let you know I'm changing the dimensions for the fish food. It's going to be one-fifth by one-fifth by one-fifth. And then we're going to change the shipping box to two and one-fifth, two, and two and three-fifths. So let's go ahead and do that now, and I'm going to go ahead and open a new Word document so you can see how we're supposed to answer this and not copy and paste. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to go ahead and type in the measurements. The smaller box was one-fifth by one-fifth by one-fifth. And we're trying to put together the fact that when we say by, we're talking um, multiply. Okay. This would create part of our unit cube. So if I want to know what a unit cube is, it doesn't matter which denominator I have. It's the number one is what we're looking for. So when I do five times five times five, and one times one times one, if we're finding volume, it would be 1 125th. Alrighty, because we multiply that, and that's the volume of the small cube. Now, moving forward, if I was going to make a unit cube, I would need 125 of these because a unit cube would be the number 1. So that means 125 over 125 would make one unit cube. I'm hoping this starts to make sense. So regardless of what the denominator is, the number 1 is represented by having the exact same amount in the numerator. Okay, so now we go ahead and multiply it. You have 16 fifths Then you'll have 2 over 1 and 18 fifths. Now, in the notes, there was a shortcut way to show this. They just did each side by 1 fifth to see how many 1 fifths went into 16 fifths, and then took that number and multiplied the whole numbers. So they did 16 fifths divided by 1 fifth, 2 over 1 divided by 1 fifth, 18 fifths divided by 1 fifth. And when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. Then they went ahead and crossed, canceled all those numbers, and were able to come up with whole numbers. Either way will work. The key to this, though, is understanding what a unit square is. So after you find how many little boxes, how many fish boxes go into the big box, then to figure out the unit square, you would divide by 125 so that you can figure out how many unit squares it makes. Because remember, a unit square is going to change based on what your smaller cube was, because the smaller one was a cube. The bigger box was not a cube. It was a rectangular prism. So here we go. How is it measured? Length times width times height. How are they similar? Well, one's a cube, one is not. And then it says, by looking at the images, can you guess? So what they're trying to show that you as a student is that 
things are not done to scale. Because if you just kind of look at that, it looks like you're only going to fit a couple of them inside the box. But the scale or picture isn't to the right sizes. So if we were to say one-fifth goes into three feet, well, you need five-fifths that go into one foot. So how many five-fifths would be here? There would be 15 fifths. That's how we get three. 15 fifths would go across the bottom. And we could round and say, well, maybe 15 would go this way and 15 would go this way. Then it's 15 times 15 times 15, and that's how we estimate. Okay? So it's using your estimation and your rounding skills and understanding that this piece right here would go in here. And then you would stack them and how many would fit in there. And hopefully you would say a bunch. Because if you did 20 times 20 times 20, or 15 times 15 times 15, heck, even if you did 10 times 10 times 10, you're going to know that's at least 1,000. And half of 10 times 10 times 10 would be 500. So you're looking at over 1,500 or somewhere close to. Okay? So now once you are able to find how many boxes go in, how many little boxes go into the big box. So here we go. So we'll take it back to here and we'll just go one fifth times one fifth. Alrighty, so now that we're back, we'll do one fifth times one fifth times one fifth. How else can we write it? We can write it as one fifth times one fifth times one fifth. Yes, when you put parentheses, it means the same as multiplication. So this and this are the same. Right? So now let's look at the bigger box. We have that multiplication problem here, and we know we multiply across the top. So 16 times 2 times 18. I'll let you work it out, and then we'll check answers. Go ahead and pause until you finish. Alrighty, so hopefully you came up with 256 over. All right, so hopefully these are the two answers you came up with. So now we figure out how many smaller boxes go into the big box, which would be a division problem. So you could write it out like this. 256 over 25 divided by 1 divided by 20, 125. And hopefully we remember that when we divide fractions, we actually multiply by the reciprocal. And that's a key part of this, understanding the vocab. So here we go. Go ahead and do that and show me what that looks like. Alrighty, hopefully you got 256 over 25 times 125 over 1. Alrighty, now we can reduce before we multiply. I am hoping that you knew that there were 525s that go into 125. So we have 256 over 1 times 5 over 1. So now we get our answers. There's 1,280 fish boxes that are 1 by 5 that will fit inside of the bigger box. It's a lot of fish boxes. All right, so now if we wanted unit cubes, we would take that answer and we have to divide it by 125 because 125 out of 125 makes one unit cube. So if we take all those cubes and we divide it by 125, we can now figure out how many unit cubes there are. So now we do 128, 80 divided by 125, and 
this would give us how many unit cubes there are. I'll pause it and wait for your answer. Yes, there would be 10 unit cubes. 10 unit cubes with smaller cubes left over. And that remainder is written as over 125. So I'll give you a second to figure out what that remainder is. Remember, we're not changing it to a decimal. We're seeing how many times it goes in and then writing the remainder over the fraction. And hopefully you got the answer 30 smaller cubes left over. All right, so now that we've done the arithmetic, let's go back and just look at what they asked us to do. All right, so now when we're looking at our options, we are able to figure out how volume is measured, the differences between and similarities between the two objects, looking at the images, taking a guess, and how did we guess? Remember, you have to come up with your own guess. Did you round? Did you average? Did you look? Did you look at the picture and see? You could be wrong. Did you look at the picture and think they were the same scale size? So that's what they're trying to see. And then when we do the work for two, you should be able to do the arithmetic and type it without a problem now and say, oh, well, this is how many fish boxes fit inside. Now, there are different ways of doing it. And if you follow your notes, they actually show you step by step what you should do. It's OK. Some of you think outside the box. It's not necessarily you have to do the same work. It's the fact that your work has to make sense to you. So when you find the packing cubes, the packing cubes are your big cubes. And then when you use the formula, why would they both be the same? Well, your two measurements should be the same for what reason? Explain. So this is the part where you have to think, why is it that the packing cubes gives you the same answer as the volume formula? And you should be able to see the connection in the arithmetic that you wrote. All right? So do the best you can, because even if you get that last part right or incorrect, the majority of what you've done, you've been able to prove. Terribly big stumbling block. It is at times because this is a multi-step problem. So when I start talking to you guys and I let you know that the biggest difference in advanced is the fact that when you do things, you have multi or compound questions. One question doesn't have one answer. It has two different things. So like, look at part one. What is volume? How is it measured? They want you to give two different answers. How are they similar? How are they different? You need to give two different answers, even though it's only in question two. Part two. So when you're doing your work and you're pulling it up on your document, you should label it that way. I would say label it like this. Part one one and then give my answer type in my answer part two type in my answer I do not need you to copy and paste the questions that will cause academic integrity issues because they're going to think you're copying it from other sources so it's really important to avoid cut and paste never cut and paste period just type in the answers all right guys I hope this clears it up Please reach out if you have any questions. You will see that I have now extended hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays to try to help accommodate some of the high volumes of questions. And continuously look for these help videos in my black button that says help videos on my homepage. Thank you very much. Bye.